Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I do want to show you how to crochet this amazing sweater vest. Yeah, that's how it's called. <laughs> so it's called sweater vest, vest, yeah, one of those things. I do want to show you how to crochet this uh, sweater vest with all this um, shoulders here because they are so fashion right now, so in right now. Everybody wants to have these pads over here. Actually, these are not with pads underneath. But on the tutorial, I am going to show you that step by step. This is a version of another sweater that I did with a long sleeve, a cropped one. I will uh, pop it for you somewhere here on the screen. And uh, it's just that version is just a little bit longer and then, you know, minus the sleeves. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to leave for you the whole pattern of this uh, sweater vest also in my website and of course I would love to hear your ideas, your opinions and what do you think about this project if you are going to do one and also what else do you want to see from me? Drop everything in the comment section down below and let's just get into it. For this project I am going to use uh, from Paint Box Yarns a Simply a Run which is 100% acrylic and the measurements are 100 gram per skin and one skin is long 184 meters. I will drop the link in the description box and also a 10 mm hook and a few markers to help with the counting. I am crocheting an S size sweater and for that I started with 65 chain stitches. The front and back panels will be crocheted from side to side and not from bottom up as they normally are. So once I crocheted 65 chain stitches, I skipped the first chain from the hook and crocheted a slip stitch on the second chain from the hook. I place the marker and the first slip stitch to help me not to lose that stitch on the way back. I continued crocheting slip stitch until I had 7 slip stitches in total. At the 8th chain, I started to crochet closed half double crochet, so I yarned over, inserted the hook on the next chain, yarned over again, pulled the loop through, and then again I pulled the same loop through the other two loops. I placed a marker on the first closed half double crochet, and I kept crocheting closed half double crochet stitches to the end of the row. In total I had 57 closed half double crochet stitches. Once I finished the first row, my work looked like this. Then, for the second row, one chain, turn my work, skip the first stitch from the hook, then I inserted the hook on the second stitch from the hook, but on the back loop as shown. So I yarned over, inserted the hook on the back loop of the second stitch, Yarn over again and pull the loop through, then the same loop I pulled it through the last two loops on the hook. 
From now on, we will work our stitches on back loop only. So again, I inserted the hook on the back loop of the next stitch and crocheted it and closed half double crochet on back loop. I kept crocheting closed half double crochet stitches until I arrived at the first marker. In total 57 closed half double crochet stitches. At the 57th closed half double crochet stitch I placed the marker again and the last 7 stitches of the row I crocheted slip stitch on the back loop only. I inserted the hook on the back loop of the stitch, showed from the needle, yarned over, pulled a loop and then pulled it again through the last loop on the hook. I continued to crochet slip stitches on back loop to the end of the row. This is how my work looked like once I finished the second row. For the third row, one chain, turn your work and again, as in the second row, skip the first stitch from the hook and crochet a slip stitch on the back loop of the second stitch. I continued crocheting slip stitch at back loop until I had 7 slip stitches. Then I took out the marker and crocheted closed half double crochet back loop at the marker stitch. I put back the marker and I continued crocheting closed half double crochet stitches to the end of the row in total 57 stitches. This is how my work looks like at the end of the third row. I continued crocheting forth and back the pattern of the second and third row until I had 29 ribbings. In total for the back panel will be needed 56 rows. Okay you guys, this pattern is actually kind of like the continuation of the sweater, the ribbing sweater that I did previously. So it's just the same pattern without the sleeves, but I do want to show you how to do the shoulders because they're, these are going to be like, um, yeah, like shoulders that will just fall down like this. So I do want to show you how probably I'm going to do the sewing for the shoulders or maybe some padding. So uh, this is how the back side looks like. It's actually similar with the um, other sweater that I did. It's just a little bit longer and uh, by now you have already seen the quantity of the stitches, uh, the chain stitches that I started. So this is the back part. I have in total 29 ribbons, same as the other one and I'm going to show you some sizes now. So here at the top the width is approximately 52 centimeters, uh, but you know, not 52. And the length, actually, it's a little bit <clears throat> more than the other one because this is 10 stitches longer, so it's 48 centimeters long. Okay, so now let's get to the front part. Now on to crochet the front panel, we start with the same amount of chain stitches as the back panel, 65 chain stitches and again crocheting the panel from side to side, not bottom up. Now 
once crocheted 65 chain stitches, I skipped the first chain stitch from the hook and crocheted a slip stitch on the second chain from the hook. I continued crocheting slip stitches until I had 7 in total. At the 8th stitch I switched to closed half double crochet stitch. I continued crocheting closed half double crochet stitch until the end of the row. In total I had 57 closed half double crochet stitches. For the second row, one chain, turn my work and since we are on the half double crochet side, I skipped the first chain from the hook and started to crochet closed half double crochet on the back loop of the second stitch from the hook. I continued crocheting closed half double crochet stitches on the back loop until I had 57 in total. At the 58th stitch I switched to slip stitch again on back loop only. From now on we work on back loop only. I crocheted 7 slip stitches on back loop that is till the end of the row. Then one chain, turn my work and started to crochet the third row. Since this row starts with slip stitch, I skipped the first chain from the hook, then I crocheted on the second stitch from the hook, a slip stitch on the back loop. I continued crocheting seven slip stitches in total Then, at the 8th stitch, I switched to closed half double crochet on the back loop only. I continued repeating the pattern of the 2nd and 3rd row seven more times, then one more, the pattern for the second row. In total, 18 rows. For a clearer pattern understanding, please check my website and all the graphs that I will post there. Also, please note that the loose end of the chain stitch that we did on the beginning are on the left of your panel. You must have nine ribbing patterns and the last row must end on the slip stitch side of the panel. From now on we start decreasing on the half double crochet side one stitch per two rows, so we can have a round opening for the neck. So now to the pattern, I started the 19th row, for that one chain, turn your work, skip the first chain from the hook and slip stitch on the second stitch from the hook, on back loop. I crocheted seven slip stitches, then switch to closed half double crochet back loop on the 8th stitch. And I kept crocheting 56 closed half double crochet stitches, leaving the last stitch without crocheting. The 20th row, one chain, turn your work.
and I crocheted 56 closed half double crochet on back loop Then I switch to slip stitch for the last 7 stitches of the row. I continue to repeat the pattern of the 19th and 20th row until I had 6 stitches decreased. So I repeated the pattern of 19th and 20th row 5 more times. I ended up again with the yarn on the slip stitch side of the pattern and in total 30 rows. Then I started crocheting using the same pattern for the decreasing. Instead of decreasing I increased on the half double crochet side one stitch. So for the 31st row I crocheted 7 slip stitches then 51 closed half double crochet stitches to the end of the row. Once arriving at the end of the row, I crocheted two chains. Turn my work. Then skip the first chain. And crocheted one closed half double crochet stitch on the second chain from the hook. This is how I did the increase for the second half of the pattern. From the second stitch on, we crochet closed half double crochet on back loop. In total 52 closed half double crochet stitches, then 7 slip stitches to the end of the 32nd row. This is how my work looked like once I had finished the 31st and 32nd increase rows. These increase rows correspond to the decrease rows shown. I continued crocheting the same amount of the decreased rows, but now increasing on each half double crochet row one stitch until I have 57 closed half double crochet stitches in total. So I repeated the 31st and 32nd row pattern five more times, increasing on each half double crochet end of the pattern, which is the neck area, one stitch every two rows. This is how my work looked like once I increased all the stitches that I decreased on the first half pattern. Again I ended on the slip stitch side of the pattern and counting from the next ribbing of the center ribbing I had 6 increasing ribbing patterns for the other side of the neck area. Starting from the middle ribbing the increased and decreased ribbing patterns match on each side as shown. 
To continue crocheting the shoulder pattern, I continued crocheting 8 more ribbing patterns as on the first half of the pattern. So I just repeated the pattern 57 and closed half double crochet, 7 slip stitches on back loop only until I had 9 ribbing patterns for the other shoulder. In total 58 rows. To bring the yarn on the top right shoulder, I crocheted one more row so my front panel had in total 59 rows. Okay, so here we are and this is the front part. Again, the front panel is same as the other uh, sweater that I did with the long sleeves. The same pattern over here. The only uh, difference is only the length, which is 10 stitches uh, more. So I am just going to show you now what is the length from here to here and from the top shoulder down here. So from the center here until the end is 45 centimeters and from the end shoulder here until the end is 52 centimeters like that but um, I just went straight so I did not go around but if I go around it's like 54 so um, it's normal that it's longer than the other one because it's 10 stitches longer but it's the same logic. So as you know, again, 29 ribbings over here and I always finish um, one row back because um, that's how this pattern works for me. <laughs> so next what I'm gonna do, I need to do the sewing. So I'm gonna put first the back panel uh, like this. Of course, uh, the where we started the chains is on the top on the top left and where we finish the panel is on the top right. This is how it's going to be placed and then the other front panel again I'm going to be placed it in the same way where uh, I have the chain stitches it's on the top left and where I have the uh, last uh, uh, the end that I finished is on the top right and just place them like this and uh, okay so this is how, I'm, how am I going to I am going to place it and then I'm just going to start sewing the shoulder over here the shoulder over here and then I'm going to uh, sew uh, these two sides and I'm going to leave a, uh, uh, I'm going to leave probably like this I will show you the measurements once I finish uh, sewing the, um, the space over here <clears throat> and actually the sewing is just the same as I did for the um, other sweater because of the color because this is kind of dark color and doesn't show well on the tutorial so all the steps I'm going to show you with my other uh, sweater because it's the same steps so uh, let me just finish the sewing and then we are going to do the, the neck over here. So here we are and I did uh, sew the shoulders, both shoulders. I did sew the sides over here. I am going to do the collar over here, a little bit high collar and I want to show you that step by step. So for that I am going to use just slip stitch and for that I will start from here in the middle in the back. So I am going to work and get the middle ribbing and I think the middle ribbing probably is this one here. So in the middle ribbing I am just going to insert the hook right here where I have the last V, as you can see the last V, insert the hook over there, take the yarn and I will just leave some yarn at the end, pull a loop, then be careful to not uh, lose this end and I am just going to crochet 12 chain stitches. One two, three, twelve. So once I have 12 uh, chain stitches, I will crochet one more chain stitch. This is for the turning. So I will skip the first chain stitch and I will insert the hook on the second chain stitch. So skip the first one and insert on the second one. And in this place, I will do one slip stitch. So this is the first 
a slip stitch and then again in the next stitch insert the hook and again another slip stitch continue crocheting slip stitches on all stitches one by one to the end of the chain stitches that we did in total there are going to be 12 uh, slip stitches Okay, so here we are and once I have 12 slip stitches all the way back, so the last slip stitch actually it is right here, as you can see, on the last uh, chain that we did. So this is the last slip stitch. So you do this one and then you have 12 uh, slip stitches. Now the next um, row first we have to grab it uh, we are going to insert the hook right here in between these two ribbings okay so the next one we have first to insert the hook so this is one ribbon this is the other ribbing so in between these two you insert the hook right there you find a space you will see very clearly I think right here in this space insert the hook and then you are going to do one slip stitch again and this if you can count you are going to have this is like the 13th slip stitch but this is not going to count because when we go on the way back we are going to skip this stitch and we are going to insert the hook in the next stitch so um, this is kind of like the turning stitch okay so even if you do 13 slip stitches with the connection over here still uh, this is not going to count so now once we have done also the connection here in between the two ribbings we are going to turn our work on the other side okay so now in the other side as I told you we are going to work back loop because it's slip stitch back loop and we are going to skip this stitch and insert the hook in the back loop of the second stitch okay and then just slip stitch on the back loop so this is the first stitch and then again in the next stitch slip stitch back loop and continue like that until the end in total you will have 12 slip stitches again So here we are, I did 12 slip stitches on the way back and your work is going to look like this from the back. So here is the back. So your work is going to look like this on this side. And then if you turn, on this side where you have the neck here, your work is going to look like this, okay? So now we are going to work on the way back. So for the way back, again, one chain. Turn your work. And now again, skip the first chain and insert the hook at the back loop of the second stitch and slip stitch. Continue doing slip stitches until the end, in total 12 slip stitches. Now again, I just want to show you that the last stitch is sometimes very kind of hidden, so you have to find it. Actually, mine is really, really hidden. So you can see probably this here. This is my stitch. So I actually have to grab this little bad boy over here. So just I insert the hook sometimes this side of the hook and I grab that loop and I bring it forth. So now it's easy to know where to insert the hook. So just be careful with that and find the last stitch. Don't let it escape. Okay. And here I have now 12 single uh, slip stitches on the way back and the next place where I'm going to insert the hook is 
at the next ribbing so this is how I'm, i am going this is how i'm going to work i am going to work um i'm going to grab all the ribbons and also in between the ribbons so insert the hook where is the next ribbing over here and at the last stitch the last stitch of the ribbing here in the middle and slip stitch so your work is gonna look like this turn skip the first stitch and insert the hook in the back loop of the second stitch and slip stitch and continue uh, slip stitch until the end of the row so 12 slip stitches on the way back until here So this is how uh, it's going to look on the back side and this is how it's going to look on the front side. So just keep working like that, slip stitch, back loop only uh, until you come over here and now of course I'm going to grab the stitch in the middle and then the next ribbing and then again the next stitch in the middle and so on and I will go all around here where I have the sewing. If you want to you can grab the, the one stitch over here but if you don't want to you can just leave it like that and then you just pass from this stitch to uh, the front ribbing and then continue like that uh, crocheting all around so I will continue to crochet all around and I will see you once I arrive at the end and I will show you how to sew it okay you guys so here it is I can't say exactly how many rows forth and back I did but you know more or less you can calculate if you want to i just uh, crocheted it as you as i told you previously i crocheted um i grabbed the ribbing and in between the ribbing the ribbing and in between the ribbing and so forth and back all around as you can see and now once i arrived at the last one i have to cut and sew I left quite some yarn because I'm planning to sew here and then we have to sew also on this side and I don't want to um, you know have another nod so I am going to leave quite some uh, yarn over here and with the tapestry needle I am going to start sewing okay so it, don't worry it's not going to be some kind of huge kind of uh, crazy sewing stuff it's just going to be some normal sewing and um yeah i will just uh, grab i can show you uh, from the side where you can see a v like this i will just grab the v over here like this and the same on the other side um there is different ways there is no exact way especially when you work with the same color i don't see a big big uh, problem when you use different kind of stitches i know that out there on internet there are so many tutorials invisible sewing and blah blah and all that but yeah i mean um every kind of sewing works for me and you can just uh, sew them like this and still it will look nice same as I did here on the side. You see, I just sewed from the outside and it still looks like another ribbing. Or you can just sew as I did the shoulder over here, just, uh, you know, trying to do the other V over here and still looks good. So yeah, don't bother too much about this. Don't worry too much about this. And I guess um, if you have a little bit experience on crocheting and making crochet garments, well, you already know this by now. You don't have to... Uh, don't uh, worry and don't uh, make yourself too many troubles, I think. So, <laughs> okay, so I will start sewing and I am going to just uh, try to grab a little bit this over here because I did everything, but I don't know why this space is a little bit weird over here. So I'm just going to grab this one too. But... This is just to put things in order. You don't have to do that if yours is in place. And yeah, you can see now that everything is perfectly aligned. Yeah. And this is the end. 
and then I'm going to um, hide this end later on and yeah I'm just going to do like this uh, I will just grab here the V right in the middle Yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal. I will just grab this and pull. And then again in the other side. The V in the middle. So you can see here. So here is the V, all this V. And then just in the middle, just try to match the V's. Do not, for example, so one V here and one V here, but you know, just try to match them. Or try to sew the same V's, but yeah, so in the middle here as well. Pull. The same, it's approximately here. Just get it here. You can already see that it's not a big deal. And also in the other side, because this is actually the side that will show. So we have to be careful about that more. So the V over here. And I will grab this side over here. You see already it looks invisible over here, but I'm worried more about this side. Yeah, this is also very, okay. this is also okay over here. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue with this sewing. Okay, this is the last one. And I think it's okay. Yeah, here a little bit strange, but that's fine too. Okay, so this is here, this side, and this is on the back side. This is going to be covered anyway, because I'm going to sew. So now let me show you what I'm gonna do next. So once I arrived over here, I am going to pull the um, neckline like this and divide in two by two and I am just going to start sewing all this all around here is the other side where I crocheted it so I want to cover that so just there at the border Again, not some very fancy whatever sewing, especially it's uh, with um, the same yarn, so... But still you want to grab these little things over here. Let me, sh let me show you closer. You still want to grab this, this loose, this loose um, ends, no, how do you say, this loose loops okay you want to grab this so you want to sew through this once and like this it will look nice you want to sew them down here so you can see where i put the needle these are the uh, the loops or the places where i'm going to sew okay so once you fix it on this side then just find the this this is the first one who corresponds to this then I will grab down here and then the next one yeah is this one so I will grab the next ribbing you see it shows here the direction so you just grab this one where is the ribbing again here Um, your work work will kind of guide you anyway so yeah again here where was the ribbing so there is no 
ribbing here yeah let's see here in the middle of the two ribbings here and then I have this one the ribbing and just continue like that so it will look like this you can see now okay let me continue sewing all around and you do the same with your work Before I finish sewing the neck over here, I want to hide also this end and fix it very well because I want to finish the sewing until the end and I don't want to just cover it because I don't want to have it loose. So yeah, probably you should have done that from the beginning. It was better, but just so you know. <laughs> Okay, so this is hidden over here and I will continue to finish the sewing. So once it's all sewed, I will just hide this other end. Okay, so here it is, the uh, neck is sewn. Okay, so hi guys, this is all finished. I finished also the neck and everything and this is how it looks like and probably the color is a little bit dark because, you know, it is a dark color. So at the end, I ended up with, uh, you know, a piece like this, but I don't want to leave everything like this and it doesn't even look even nice, but I'm happy with the length, I'm happy with everything how it looks like. So now the next thing that I want to do to have those padded shoulders, I have to turn this one inside like this. And I'm gonna do that only here on the top and the rest, I'm just gonna bring it in that way that this will have no folding from the inside. So I will fold it here and I will continue folding it a little bit over here as well, slowly, slowly until it comes to nothing at the bottom over here. Uh, here it will not fold at all. Here is the maximum that I will fold and then slowly, slowly until here comes to nothing. Anyway, I will show it to you as well, but first you have to try it on and then to see how much you want to fold yours. This is um, the point of all this. So yeah, I like, you see this one not folded and this one folded from the inside on top here. So this has the shoulder, the padded shoulder, let's say, and this has no padded shoulder. So yeah, definitely this is prettier and beautiful. So you have to do this uh, finish to finish up this way. So I'm gonna fold in here like this and in the same way in the other side. So let me show you. I have folded one, two, three. So at the third one, it was inside. So I, I will fold at the top three ribbings. One, two, three. One, two, three ribbings will go from inside. Three ribbings here. So that's where I put a um, marker just to uh, have the everything in place. I will just pin it here with a tapestry needle and this will not do anything. Okay. So once I have this two, uh, no, three ribbings under, then I can just take it off and then uh, pin it and then sew it. Okay, you guys. So here is the one that I took out. So I have here left the one, two, three, four, five, five ribbings out and then three ribbings in. Okay, so I am going to turn from inside out now and here is the side where I have to fold. From this side, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pin, let's say four, no, five, five centimeters, okay? I'm gonna fold it five centimeters, three ribbings on the shoulder and then from the shoulder, to the opening over here. Here I'm not going to fold anything at all. So you have to fold it on both sides and bring it in a certain way that uh, when it comes here you don't have to sew. So 
fold it like this gradually uh, leave uh, less space here until you come to no folding at all here at the end. I hope you understand and I hope it makes sense. Here it is. I did paint it on this side and here is nothing. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, so once I paint on both sides like this, I will sew again with a tapestry needle and the same yarn. So I will just uh, start from here, but you can start from everywhere you want to. And just with very, very... First you have to uh, insert the needle, so the... so the end over here will not just slip through, because uh, we have worked very... Um, the work is a little bit, you know, the knot can go through. So just grab them a little bit one here and one in the other side like that not too much uh, fancy sewing so i'm just going to grab very very little here i don't want to show in the other side i mean you can it's the same color anyway just don't grab too much and then uh, very light sewing as you can see you can still see the sewing on this side. I'm not going to bother with some fancy sewing. And again on the other side, I will do the same until the end over here. Here it is. I did sew all around and I'm just going to hide this. And that's how it is done. I'm gonna do the same on the other side and let me show you how it all came together.